Guys, um, thanks for joining. And uh, today we've got Mr. Biohacker himself, Joe Cohen, who is a bit of a legend um, in the whole biohacking space. I know of his website for a very long time before I knew Joe. And um, it's one of the best resources on the internet, along with uh, Dr. McCola's site as well for me. And every time I Google just about anything to do with biohacking or any of the cool, crazy things that I was up to, Joe's site would come up and that was self-hacked. And um, he's got um, a brand called Self um, Decode as well, which is about genetic optimization. And so if you don't already follow Joe, Mr. Biohacker and Self Decode, um, you should go and sign up to the newsletter because it's some of the best content out there. And I truly mean that. So um, the reason why Joe and I are speaking today um, for you guys is because uh, Self Decode is exhibiting at the summit and um, we're going to go through why you should go and see him and why I've invited them to speak, uh, why I've invited them to exhibit at the summit, sorry, um, because I think it's awesome. And I've been using the platform for quite a while now. So, um, okay, cool. So, yeah, so Joe, I mean, you've been in biohacking for quite some time. Do you want to quickly give us a skip through history of how it happened? Yeah, so uh, growing up, I basically had a myriad of health issues, and uh, I, you know, I was trying a bunch of different things growing up, like different diets, and I pr pretty much tried every diet, and uh, finally, uh, at some point, I was, my issues were getting worse, and I, I realized I needed to really focus on that, so I was basically doing like biohacking full-time for a bit, for a while, and then, uh, you know, and I was reading a lot of literature, and then I uh, re you know, I figured out my health issues and I did that in part through lab tests, genetics, uh, my symptoms and just reading a lot of different science and then also experimenting as well. Mm. So I was able to fix all of my health issues and that was the start of my business career when once my issues were resolved, I was able to, you know, focus on building tools that would not only help me, but would also help other people. Mm. Yeah. And a large part of that is being content based, right? <laughs> like hugely content based. Yeah. So a lot of it would just be like, you know, I wanted a site where I could, you know, type in a topic and get the kind of thorough research, unbiased research that I wanted. Uh, mm. Then a lot of that also is personalized content with genetics and, and lab tests. I wanted to be able to, you know, uh, uplo upload my labs and, and see where I need, you know, what's not optimal, what do I need to improve? And then the same with the genetics, what, where are my weaknesses in genetics? And those, um, you know, for the past five years, I've been doing that. And, and those be have been giving me tremendous amount of uh, experiments that have been very fruitful to try. Mm. Um, I've been following it, obviously, and <laughs> reading the content and following the journey for quite a while. So it was quite good when uh, a mutual friend of us put, uh, put us in touch. Um, so it was, I was a bit of a fanboy, I've got to be honest. <laughs> when we first hung out, it was quite, quite funny. Um, yeah, awesome. So, so, so where are things at now then, um, Joe? Because obviously the self-hacked was your original site with all the content on it and everything. And then Google came along and penalized anyone that was sharing out proper content. <clears throat> I mean, sorry, sorry, um, uh, questionable content. Um, um, and anyone that's not pharmaceutical based, I think. Um, I'll say that, not you. Uh, but um, so, so where do we find ourselves with Self Decode today? Because obviously that's your another one of your brands and, and the next gen, I guess. Yeah, so it's been uh, progressing by quite a lot. And uh, what, we, we've done a few things there that have been really cool. We've, been, uh, we've, we've started a personalized health blog. So this way we would talk about a topic. Uh, we would talk about it, like, for example, let's say, if you have gut inflammation. So I've always had gut inflammation and I want to know like where exactly is my, what genes are contributing to my gut inflammation. If we take any given topic, you could have about 50 genes uh, that are important to a topic, let's say. Now, what we do is you can sort that out based on like uh, where your, which genes are causing the highest risk. And then you can read, instead of reading 50 articles, you could read the top 10 articles that are basically telling you about your genetic blueprint and then, uh, you know, and then dissecting it and showing you here's 
what is not good about this with relation to gut inflammation. Here's what you can do to improve it. Here's a list of steps. And then we have reports that basically take these recommendations, combine them, and give you a prioritized list based on the top negative uh, genetics. And so this way you could do you know you could read the report if you just want the prioritized list or you can look at read more thoroughly the personalized post so i think you know if you are having a, a health problem or you want to optimize something you really want to know what are the top 10 genes that i have a problem with not in general what are the ones that i have a problem with and then based on that you can uh you know you can read that personalized content you know within a few within an hour you could read 10 posts and you can really get a good idea. Uh, each post is personalized with the genetics and we're adding lab tests to the personalization. Uh, but you can get a good idea of what are the top things that you need to do to become more optimal. And the same with the lab test, that, with the lab analyzer, which we add to, added to Self Decode. So now Self Decode has its lab analyzer where you upload your labs. Uh, we automatically upload them and then we basically just show you here are the labs that you need to work on and how, here's how you make them optimal. Mm. <clears throat> okay, awesome. So uh, one of the things that strikes me about um, what, what you actually have is so it's a platform that um, you can have your genetic data from various other sources. I mean, I uploaded my 23andMe test into your platform. Actually, no, I've done that um, with a couple of friends as well, just to test and look at their personalized reports. And you can download personalized reports based on your genetic variations, which is really quite nice. Um, so it gives you a fairly, like for instance, one, the typical one that a lot of people speak about now, and it's, it's become very commonplace to talk about is the MTHFR gene variation. And some people say it's like the, the magical, uh, magical fix of all, which, I mean, it does work very well for some people. It fixes chronic fatigue very quickly. But I think one thing that struck me was that there's a lot of genetic systems out there, but with the personalized reports, it's actually giving you a full PDF that's customized based on the data that you've uploaded into it, which I thought was freaking awesome. So, um, so that's one of the, the reasons why I really wanted you obviously to exhibit, but um, also, you'll be going into more detail on this because you're speaking as well um, as one of the, the speakers in the lineup. Um, so, yeah, so for you, those uh, listening, I think it's really important to know that if you've had a genetic test, you can upload it into um, Self Decode, but also you can order a genetic test via Self Decode and have it uploaded in there as well. And I, I just think that's quite nice because with a lot of genetic tests, they give you the raw data or they give you a rubbish platform. They don't necessarily tell you what's what, they just tell you the SNPs. Um, and all the, all the baffling information, but don't necessarily give you a report that you can read and understand. And that's one of the things which is why I really wanted you guys to be at the show, because I think it's an area that's kind of missing. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, I, cool. I agree. So, um, so um, how, so what would you say the, the, key, the be key benefits would be for someone using the decode, self-decode platform, other than um, what we've just said? Yeah, so the way that you have to use the platform is you have to first understand what is the issue that you're trying to solve, right? Uh, you know, like it could be a mood issue, it could be gut inflammation, or it could be, uh, you know, it could be cognitive function, there, sleep, whatever it is. There, there could be a number of things that you want to optimize, right? And you have to decide which one. Then you go to the report, you go to the blog post. And those will tell you, uh, then, then, you, then you see how to optimize them based on your uh, genetics. And then you're, you also want to up, upload your labs, whatever labs you have done over the years. And then you can see which labs are suboptimal. So this is all part of the same platform. Uh, and then it's also connected to Self Decode as well. We're making uh, Self Decode, uh, we're, we're putting Self Hacked in, in, I mean, Self Hacked into the Self Decode platform as well, where it's kind of like this whole ecosystem where you have like the, the content, you have the reports, you have the personalized blog, and then you also have the uh, lab tests that you can upload. So it kind of gives you a, a bigger picture about what's going on with all these uh, platforms. Mm, yeah, that's very cool. So <clears throat> we've got a question coming, which I'm gonna ask. And obviously, um, just from memory, we've got, um, we've got a code um, to give away at the end uh, so you can get 10% off of the system. And um, there's also a free winner free subscription for the best question today. So those guys that are listening in live today, 
you can get a free subscription to Self Decode, um, valued at around seventy-seven pounds. Um, so I guess that's about eighty or ninety dollars or something like that. Um, so, so the best questions that come in, Joe will pick one at the end and um, you'll get free access. So the first question that's come in is, can you repair DNA that has bad, uh, that has bad memory, um, counteracting the problems for future generations? I think, uh, so, it, I mean, that's a complex question, but I think what we're doing is, you know, your DNA is fixed, right? That doesn't change, um, you, you know, it's pretty much fixed. Once you get it, it's fixed. And basically what your DNA does is kind of give you a predisposition for your, your, your genetic predisposition, how that influences epigenetics a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have epigenetic influences that, you know, maybe one generation had um, a very stressful event or something, and that can impact future generations. But, you know, with proper, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're giving the right recommendations in order to change that genetic expression. And then once you change the genetic exp expression, mm. it should also change for future generations as well. Mm. So I just want to <clears throat> just want to jump in here. So uh, that's a really good answer. And I, um, obviously, but when you say genetic expressions, just for the people watching, do you mean, well, what, what do you mean specifically when you say change the genetic expression? So every, a lot of things that you do, I mean, pretty much everything that you do changes your genetic expression in some way or another, right? Um, and then obviously some ways are not good for you and some ways are good for you. And what we want to do is change the genetic expression for the good, obviously. But for example, like let's say, yeah, any negative behavior that you do, uh, you know, is going to change the uh, function of important genes. It might be expressed less. It might be you know, wouldn't be amplified as much, um, whether it's, we're talking about fat burning genes, whether we're talking about mood genes, you know, and that's kind of why you see that a lot of issues happen over time also, because, you know, uh, number one is like, you know, damage can accumulate over time and there's an aging factor, of course, but there's a lot of things where genetic expression exchange, uh, it changes in this area and then another area. And then eventually you have this storm of genetic expression. Now, Again, genetic expression could be a lot of things. It, there's, uh, there could be, you know, there's different tools that the body uses to do that. Methylation would be one that uh, people know about, but acetylation is also another big one. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have the CERT genes. You also have uh, like HDAC is, is a very famous pathway. So basically let's say butyrate is something that's very good at changing genetic expression. A very broad range, but but again, each thing kind of changes it in a certain way, and uh, you know, but uh, it's it's acetylation, methylation. These are kind of the tools, and then a lot of kind of, in, you know, a lot of the things that we do change that. For so a very simple one would be, you know, folate will increase methylation, right? Methylfolate. A lot of there's a lot of methyl groups. You can increase methylation that way. Then there's other things that you can do that'll increase acetylation, such as acetylcarnitine, right? And then it, it's, it's uh, you know, or just, um, uh, yeah, it, uh, butyrate or increasing CERD or things like that. So you want to, um, you know, uh, vitamin D is very big, for example, in, so vitamin D impacts 2000 genes. A lot of these kind of genetic pathways they change the expression and they can impact hundreds of genes after that, mm -hmm. right? So there's kind of like a source mm -hmm. of, of the problem, whereas you have an environmental factor and then you have a genetic, you, ha you have the DNA variants, the genetics, and then those come together. And over time, if the storm is, is, you know, if there's too many things that come together in a bad way, you could get an issue. So just define expression for me. When the gene, the, 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 the a gene is uh, something that uh, increase that, you know, basically produces a protein and our whole body is made up of proteins. The proteins tell everything what to do. And expression is just saying like, you know, there's increased number of X, Y, Z types of proteins that then tell the body to do a bunch of things. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So uh, expression in the gene would be if you have an expression, I'm doing this for the layman because a lot of people, this would be the first way yeah. in for a lot of people watching this. So I kind of <clears throat> not dummy guide, but you know, so beginners through to more advanced. Um, <clears throat> so you'd say that expression is 
the uh, I guess a change in the way that the DNA um, operates I guess yeah exactly yeah. so you know you have genes and these genes the you have SNPs that basically are kind of like you know the the machinery of the genes mm. and a gene could be uh, over you know a swath of DNA mm. and then these SNPs kind of influence the gene and then the gene uh, different things can happen for it. it basically the activity of the gene can go up or down and so that whole pathway can be increased or decreased mm. and depending on what you want to do that's very important right mm. you want to uh, stimulate the pathways that will bring you to optimal health in the thing that you're interested in so just to just to round off before we move on <clears throat> a gene expression could be let's say methylation so you have a, an expression of the gene of mt like for instance with mthfr which means the output of for instance energy production could be down as a result of you having a, a variation and therefore by optimizing it say for instance by taking method methylfolate or b12 or whatever would mean the the gene would be operating at a better rate meaning that you would have better energy production is that what you would that be a good summary yes okay awesome so i hope <clears throat> i hope you guys watching this kind of understand so understand a bit about this because um joe is so far down the rabbit hole with this he sp explains it like a pro if you get if you get all this stuff but if you don't then um i don't want you guys to be too baffled and just understand that basically he looks at um the system looks at your genetic data tells you what what things might not be going right and then you look at how to optimize it so that it does work right uh, i guess that's <clears throat> that's i guess the basis of it um sorry go on joe no so I, I what i'm what i what i want to say is that everything that you have in your body everything that you know about biology like let's say leptin insulin if we're talking about weight or the receptors those are all proteins that you know operate in a certain way you can uh, you can increase the expression of those proteins. You can decrease them. There's a whole variety of different things that you can do that essentially change the expression of all these critical uh, pathways, proteins in the body that people know about. Or even like, let's say CRP, anything that you could think of has a gene that is producing mm. that, uh, that protein in the body. So, you know, some people, for example, might have a gene, uh, the, every cytokine, Every inflammatory molecule has a gene that produces it. So like IL-6, some people are just naturally producing more. And then if you overstimulate it by unhealthy behaviors, mm. so then you want to know what are the behaviors that I need to, you know, knock this down if my predisposition for interleukin-6 is higher, let's say. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. One thing that um, really interested me uh, that I read in Sachin Panda's book, um, The Circadian Code, was that he said that different, obviously different genes turn on at different times of day. One thing yeah. that he did say that resonates with me, and I speak about it so much, is it was like mind blowing moment, though it's so simplistic, was that, for instance, the gene that um, help that makes us produce insulin down regulates in the evening when around sunset time so you can produce up to 50 times less insulin in the evening because the gene is switched off. So therefore, if you're eating after sunset, your blood sugar level will stay high because you're not producing enough insulin to bring it down. Therefore, you'll have higher blood sugar through the night opposed to having insulin, obviously dealing with it. And then as a result, you'll be storing that sugar as fat throughout the night opposed to resting and recovering and healing the damage that you've done during the day. And that's, that's the power of how genes can turn on and off. And that's obviously down to our circadian rhythm, sunlight and um, and lack of blue light, which is why blue light, such as blue blue phones or like not wearing blue blockers, can actually affect how you sleep and um, so many other factors, including um, insulin, how your body deals with the sugars that you've got going around in you. So, I mean, that's one of the things in genetic, like, it's really interesting for me. Oh, yeah. So uh, when you look at any topic, pretty much, there's, you always see circadian genes involved, right? And you want to know uh, if your circadian genes let's say are involved in a certain way right if we're talking about weight it's like okay uh do i have a circadian gene here and how do i work on that most of the time it's going to be like you know uh do things to improve your circadian rhythm mm. right and that will normalize the gene expression like you say but you know there's, there's this whole clock machinery that influences a lot of the expression of a lot of genes and so the body is very dynamic in uh, when it comes to expression of genes. That's why sometimes you might feel 
great and then sometimes you don't feel as great right mm -hmm. you're the same you have the same dna but the expression can change from one time to another and uh you know and um you want to optimize that for the right condition for the right time right mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, so there's one other thing I'd just like to touch on again. <clears throat> this is something I was discussing with Dr. Christopher Shade when he was in London uh, last, actually. was I've noticed that a lot of people that have mercury, a history of mercury, obviously have um, several genetic issues or it looks like it has, like they have a mutation. The expression is off as a result of having mercury in their body. And I think that's partly down to ends, certain enzymatic um, things that aren't happening as they should do because mercury blocks that. But um, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting because uh, my initial assumption was that by having mercury in you, then that obviously adjusts the gene, but it's just the expression is what Chris says. And it's interesting that a lot of people I've seen along the way that have had got mercury poisoning have got it from their mum, for instance, um, have had high levels of it. Chris says that he doesn't think that mercury can be passed from mum to son or daughter in utero, but I've, I've seen quite a few people actually with it and then they've got gene expressions as a result. And when they collate their mercury, they don't seem to have the same issues that they had before. So one thing that I've actually got lined up is to have another uh, 23andMe test done or one of the other genetic tests done in the coming year once I've done more mercury collation to see what, uh, see what my results look like. In theory, they shouldn't be any different, but uh, it'd be really interesting to see. I don't know what yeah, talking. I mean, I, I doubt uh, the results would be any, I mean, the result, those results won't change because those are fixed. Mm. Mm. But um, you brought up a great example of something that can cause gene expression change. So mm. the, what it goes both ways. If you ingest mercury or you're exposed to a lot of mercury, then that will obviously change gene expression, even a little mercury, right? It'll change a bunch of different areas within gene expression. Uh, mm. But on the other hand, you also have a lot of genes that can naturally, if they're, if they're working uh, in an optimal way for this, right, mm. Mm. They, uh, they can they can chelate mercury. For example, you have a lot of glutathione genes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, and so each of these, like some, a lot of, you know, you can have negative variants in one of these glutathione genes and it won't chelate mercury as well. And I found that I had a bad PON1 gene mm -hmm. and that didn't let me uh, detox toxins enough. And so, uh, you know, I was, you know, I kind of always felt that I wasn't like when I would have fish or any kind of like, uh, plastic based, like, cause fish has a lot of plastic based toxins. Um, and, and it, I tried mercury collators too with the mm -hmm. fish and it didn't do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I tried activated charcoal, which chelates these kind of plastic toxins like dioxins mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I felt way better. Right. And I also, uh, saw that my pond one gene didn't mm -hmm. detox these to toxins as well. So you know, um, I realized that I need to strengthen my PON1 system. Mm. And, you know, and there's a, it, like, there's a whole bunch of natural things that you can do to increase mm. that. It's like a lot of natural behaviors increase that. But on the other hand, also, you know, you realize, you could realize from that, oh, hey, look, pon, my PON1 isn't good. And PON1 is important for detoxing these toxins. And, you know, I should reduce pesticides and things like that. Mm. It's interesting because I remember the newsletter coming out about that. <laughs> I think um, I think you you wrote about that a few a few months about two or three months ago actually. Uh, yeah, right? that was a, yeah yeah. I wrote about that a while ago because mm. it was a, it was a big event. It was like I was looking at my genes. I was like, oh, now I understand what's going on. You know, this uh, gene that I had risk for wasn't mm. allowing me to detox these mm. these these toxins within fish as well, mm. and I would just react worse. So it wasn't a food sensitivity issue because. Mm. If I take activated charcoal with the fish, mm. I'm completely fine. Whereas mm. if I take activated charcoal with something that gives me, uh, you know, like let's say something that has lectins, like mm. grains or something like that, that gives me a bad reaction, mm. I would, the activated charcoal actually wouldn't help at all. Mm. Uh, it must be really fun, like um, as you're talking about these different genes and all the different things you're testing. I mean, I like to test, be very diagnostic with loads of different things, but on the genetic side of things, I've done a, a few of the fundamentals, but it must be really, really interesting connecting the dots and piecing these things together as you're going, oh, this is happening when this is happening. I wonder what my genes are doing here and what to optimize from it. Like, that, it must be really, like, for me, that's like, crack <laughs> like absolutely yeah no addictive. it's great i'm i'm learning things basically you know every week i learn something new about mm. myself because you know i'm you know i re i read every post that we put on the self decode personalized blog all of our reports mm. 
I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And then I do an experiment when I find something and I wait, I find ways to, you know, keep on optimizing my health. So, you know, when I fixed my health issues, I was able to become an entrepreneur, start a company. I started self-hack. That's, that's when I fixed it. Then I fixed it a little more. I started the self decode, the genetics company. <laughs> and then I fixed it a little more. Every time I fix my health more, I, I start a new company. Uh, and, and I'm actually, I'm starting, I started a new company as well. Um, so yeah, we're, I'm up to four right now. But essentially what I'm doing is I, I'm combining them all into one resource because I think each resource has its own unique things. Like, you know, if you just have your genetics, you need to see where you're holding right now. Mm. And that's what the labs can do. Mm. The genetics are great in the long run to keep on investing. That's the way I see genetics. It's like, you know, you, you really have this blueprint of your body and it's telling you all these kinds of things and you need the right tools to be able to read it. And when you do that, you can, you, you start to learn so much about your blueprint and how it's mm. operating. And, mm. you know, uh, this is interesting. This, now I know, you know, this kind of makes sense. I have these genes and mm. this is what happens when I, eat this food or whatever, or I do better with this diet. And uh, so I'm always uh, learning new things and I'm always like, you know, just uh, doing research and things like that. Like I always, um, I always knew I needed to drink a ton of water. Now water is amazing. But then I started to, uh, it was just interesting that I started to see that I had these, uh, you know, uh, vasopressin genes that were pretty rare. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just really interesting that and water is one of the best ways to actually reduce vasopressin because my gene actually increased it. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's quite complex though. What, you know, but essentially water is like really, really good for me. And it's just something like I already knew, but then I was like, wow, okay. It, it makes like, I, I see the gene that kind of is responsible for that. Mm. Right. And it's just every week I discover something new like that, mm. uh, which is, which is unbelievable. Right. So, mm. Uh, another discovery, uh, somebody asked, um, how, how have I changed my, you know, protocol based on my genetics? I mean, uh, you know, I, the CNR1 gene was one of the biggest uh, genes for me. It's mm -hmm. called the cannabinoid 1 receptor. And, you know, it turns out that, um, like, this receptor is super important when it comes to lectin sensitivity and food sensitivities, right? And... You know, and I always found that I was pretty thin. I never had to try to become thin. But on the other hand, these cannabin so cannabinoid receptors can cause weight gain a bit. If they're working properly, they can they can make you uh, gain weight if you're you know if you're doing other things wrong, if you're not healthy. But essentially, you know, uh, these cannabinoid receptors I found were a lot of a lot of my clients had these issues where, uh, you know, maybe they were more anxious, they were thinner, they had food sensitivities. And the cannabinoid receptor is really important for all those things, especially in, including gut function as well, right? So it's very, very predominant in the gut and, and in the brain and the, the uh, moods uh, areas. So what I found was we did this uh, uh, personalized post on weight. And I, was, I had every single SNP we discussed within the cannabinoid 1 receptor gene was perfect, which, mean, which, meaning, which means I'm able to lose weight fast based on that gene. On the other hand, if it's not working as well, you can lose weight. So they gave a drug that blocked the cannabinoid one receptor so that people can lose weight. And then what they found is people started to commit suicide. <laughs> and I'm sure they started having food sensitivities, but that's another issue, right? They probably just didn't measure it. They're like, these people are dying. We have to just uh, stop this. And so what you see is that the cannabinoid receptor is super important and you don't have to gain weight from it, but it's just super. Uh, so if you do have the gene that's recommendations you know if you have a gene that's operating well there's recommendations to do so that it doesn't cause you to gain weight mm. if it's not operating well then you have to increase that in order to uh, counteract let's say mood issues gut issues uh, food sensitivities and things like that and when I found that out that was a game changer right so I I tried a whole bunch of things that uh, you know affected the cannabinoid receptor increased it and it turns out that all those things were really, really good for me. So that was kind of like a hole in one that just, you know, that was a game changer. And, mm. you know, recently I read research, very interesting that, um, you know, cause I, I kind of figured some of this out on my own. I said, okay, so first I, uh, I, I, you know, and I tried, let's say marijuana before and I was like, I don't like it. It makes me too, too tired for the next couple of days or whatever. Right. Mm. So then what I did was I said, okay, you know, what? let me take an edible. 
and that actually worked better. And I said, you know what? I still, I'm still getting high. Let me take a tiny bit of the edible, like one milligram or a half a milligram. And I found that that was very good for my food sensitivities actually, and including other things like CBD oil and, uh, you know, butyrate also increases the cannabinoid receptor. There's actually quite a bunch of things, but these are some like basic stuff. And, you know, um, and then recently there was a study published that said that, that you can have very similar benefits with cannabis, THC, with the dosage that doesn't get you high, which is like one milligram. And I was like, whoa, that's really interesting because I kind of figured that out. But I always like, you know, uh, you know, so you see like there's reading research and that's what we, you know, we, we have self-hack, we give you a bunch of research, whatever. But there's also, you have to know which genes are really affecting you, right? And then um, also that gene also impacts your lab results. So your adiponectin goes up higher and your TNF alpha can also be higher because the cannabinoid mm. system suppresses that. So if the cannabinoid system is high, then mm. adiponectin and TNF go down. Whereas, uh, so what I found interesting is that I had those, I looked at my lab results and my adiponectin was higher, right? So my adiponectin was higher, you know, just the lab results, the genetics, everything kind of fits in. And, you know, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how many experiments you've done, you always can fine tune it when you really understand how your body is operating. Mm. You can always become more optimal. Mm. Yeah, awesome. There's some really awesome findings. I love I love these things being pieced together like that. <clears throat> That's very cool. So I'm going to jump into some questions now uh, quickly. So we've got a few coming in. Um, <clears throat> so what sort of um, recommendations can Self Decode recommend by Natalia? So we recommend everything in terms of the type of uh, recommendations. We, we recommend lifestyle, diet and supplements. In mm. terms of what we can how we can help an individual. We focus on, uh, we have a lot of things that we can do, but we focus on like some areas such as inflammation, uh, thyroid, mood, longevity, detox, uh, cardiovascular, fitness, diet, nutrition, gut health, uh, respiratory infections, and weight. Those are the things that we have like a lot of personalized content on. And um, so if you, you know, you have to decide like what is, I see someone's asking if you don't have a specific issue and want to generally improve your health, where would be a good place to start? So the question is, what do you want to improve? Do you want to live longer? Then that's going to be mm -hmm. one protocol, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and you could try to get like something that does many things, of course, but I'm just saying it's, you know, a lot of these healthy things that you'll do are going to improve a lot of things, of course, but you really have to decide like, okay, are you the perfect weight you want to be okay do you have any kind of mood issues whatsoever no do you have sleep <laughs> issues do you have uh we, do you want to improve your cognitive function we have a report for that right mm. um do you want to improve your nutrition like you want to see where you need to improve your nutrition vitamins minerals uh so the metabolic health there's there's always uh you know there's always things you might want to improve and if let's say you really have nothing you want to improve then maybe you want to live longer right? So I would mm. do the longevity stuff. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so awesome. So Joe, what does your diet and supplement stack look like? And, and how did DNA play a role in the diet and supplements by, I can't pronounce that right now. <laughs> so uh, one thing I realized, uh, like, okay, so when it comes to the diet, I realized the cannabinoid receptor is really important and that lectins uh, you know, if your cannabinoid receptor is not working properly, lectins and food components can really cause a lot of food sensitivity. So I would highly recommend people checking that out mm. on the personalized self decode blog and some of our reports have it as well. But yeah, it, um, so with the diet, I, I, uh, you know, I, before lectins got popular, I was, um, you know, talking about that. And then, uh, and then I bit, like my diet is I cut out grains and beans and, and uh, you know, some other kinds of things like that. And then some things I was allergic to like dairy, but um, uh, so that was the diet thing. And then there's other diet things as well, but I actually just find that, that, you know, the, the base of that diet works very well for me. And uh, you know, and then supplements I've, I've, you know, uh, uh, changed my thing a lot based on my mood report. I found a lot of things because I'm always trying to improve my mood. Mm -hmm. And I found like uh, certain pathways were not working well. 
GSK3 beta was, was one. So for example, things like lithium and butyrate are very good for that pathway if you have that kind of genetic variant. And so there's various different genetic variants where, you know, um, I also found that my serotonin system was not working as well. Mm. And so things, things that strengthen serotonin and, mm. um, yeah, you know, uh, strengthen serotonin uh, is very important for me. And same with the GSK3 beta mm. and, and, and some other things. But essentially that's kind of like, you know, I, I took a lot, I took those supplements to help me based on my, the mood report and um and then gut inflammation too there was uh things i did for that as well you know like you know cbd oil uh different kinds of things um but yeah i'm for a large part i have like a a core base stack that i i keep to a lot and you know lithium ortate is is really good for me uh, butyrate is really good for me so i take Mm -hmm. the pills and i also Mm -hmm. take uh you know fiber that turns into butyrate uh and then uh, and then I, you know, I'm, uh, curcumin is also really good for a lot of the pathways, like the gut inflammation stuff. So, you know, that ca- came up with a lot of my genes and, so, you know, CBD oil is good, uh, you know, and, and um, uh, like I said, for the mood, the lithium is good, the lithium orcade and the butyrate. Mm-hmm. It's funny you touch on <clears throat> some of my favorite supplements, actually. Uh, John Gray first put me on to lithium orcade. Um, and um, it's actually a really, really interesting uh, supplement. And it helps with the whole methylation side of things as well. Um, as well. And it's funny you say about butyrate because I'm on, I take sodium butyrate, actually sodium and potassium butyrate by Body Bio who are exhibiting this year. And they do the phospholipids or phosphatidylcholine um, and sodium potassium butyrate, which I really love. And I found that that has been amazing for me, for my gut, actually. It smells like puke. Um, when you open it, oh man, I, I broke a capsule the other week by accident and it spilt on the floor in the Airbnb. Yeah, I called a bomb squad. Oh in. man. And so I didn't think about it. It was on the floor. I must have walked on it. And then I went around to uh, Dom's house, Dr. Dominic Nitschwitz, who's a speaker's house, <laughs> took my shoes off. And his wife, Steffi, went, I think one of the children's been ill or something. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, no. no it so smells good. bad, but um, it's so bad. I still take it. I mean, even yeah. though I don't like like the smell, I still take it just because mm-hmm. I find it's really good. And um, I, I try to get butyrate from a bunch of ways. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, good for gut health. Good for, mm-hmm. for me, I find it's really good for my mood. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and it really, it, it suits my genetics. Like it mm-hmm. comes up a lot in yeah. for the bad genes. Two solid, two really solid recommendations in general. I mean, especially if it's been tailored based on your genetics, but I found that they've worked really well for me. And I think <clears throat> helping obviously your gut, if you've had gut issues um, or do have sensitivities, helping um, the bacteria flourish uh, without just chucking more probiotics down your throat is always a winner, especially if you're working yeah. with phosphatidylcholine to get the goodness into the cells as well. I think it's a... It's a big win. So yeah, it's really, really interesting that you've talked about those two things today. Um, so um, <clears throat> let's just have a cu- look at a couple more questions. I've got them listed here um, before we wrap up, Joe. Um, so um, what's the DNA tests and privacy issues? I think this is a good one, especially with the whole um, privacy side of things going on in the world at the moment. Yeah, so the DNA stuff, um, basically when a company gets big enough, uh, you know, basically companies start and they have a mission about what, how they want to make money. When it comes to the initial companies that started some time ago, uh, like Ancestry, 23andMe and some other companies, essentially they got in early where they're able to get, and they raised a lot of money and they subsidized people's DNA in order to get a lot of data to sell it to pharma companies and other places, right? Their whole business model is uh, taking your data and monetizing it uh, based on selling it. That's essentially what is happening. Now, Mm. when we started the business, Mm. that was obviously not my goal because first of all, I didn't want that to be my goal. Right. So I was against it, of course, but it also was not like, there's other players that do that. Even like, it's just not, uh, something that we would even be able to do if we wanted to do. Right. So number one is I don't want to do it. Uh, and number Mm. two is you know, you basically have to have like 2 million people's genes in order to even start thinking about it. And even if you had that, 23andMe already has 20 million. Like they'll get, people are going to work with them. So 
smaller companies, it's not going to be an issue about uh, selling, like selling your data. It's not only South Dakota, mm-hmm. it's other companies as well, but we are more strict about it because uh, it's something I care about. But mm-hmm. it's, it's not only that, I mean, when you're dealing with smaller companies, on the other hand, you're taking like a hacking risk, essentially, right? A lot of these companies are not building their software right. And we hired very, very good software developers in order to build it in a very secure way so that uh, you know, your stuff doesn't get hacked, essentially, right? There's hacking going on all the time now, but we, we've uh, taken a lot of measures to uh, prevent that. And um, yeah, and so you know, it's not something we'd ever, we ever are going to do. Uh, and uh, you know, even if we wanted to do it, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be smart move anyway, business-wise. And uh, you know, we take a lot of caution when it comes to that area. I think I'd like to jump in on this one because I agree with you. A lot of companies start and they go, how can we sell this later? Um, and they build it to sell it. There's quite a few companies in this space that have happened and they've been designed like that. I think in some of the more entrepreneurial mindsets, I mean, Joe, you're, you're very successful in the, your companies that you've run anyway. And, um, and I think with some of these guys that have come out organically that are in it to to build a company that they love, like me with the summit, I've built it because I love it and I've risked every penny I've ever saved to make it happen. I'm not looking to sell to um, big pharma or something like that. I'm looking to build a community and work with people in the biohacking space to grow it. Um, so while I will have investors um, in the summit, it's all going to be biohacking related. And I think with Joe, you're obviously you're a biohacker. Your name even says Mr. Biohacker and uh, you're, one, you're one of us. So I don't, I don't. Yeah, no, that to be no I, I exactly. I, you know, um, I specifically don't take investment. You know, uh, I'm very careful about that because I don't, I want to be able to run the company out the way I want to. Right. So I don't want it to be like some investor says, Hey, we need to do this in order to make more money. And I say, no, I don't want to do that. Right. So, um, I like to have control of the, you know, I I have control of the company and I make sure that we're going down an ethical path and, uh, you know, and there's, you know, there's a lot of, you know, the big problem really now is the analysis of the genetics, right? You, you, you can get 23 me, but they're not giving you any kind of interesting analysis or telling you how to optimize your health. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're focused on. I don't, I'm not passionate about uh, taking people's DNA data and selling it. I'm passionate about getting, mm-hmm. having the right tools so that we, I can, you know, we can give people the best information about how to fix an issue like I did with myself. And so mm. it's, a, it's a passion project also. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I want to use the tool myself and I also want other people to use it. It's, it's a passion mm. project. It's not, you know, to sell data. Yep. Awesome. So one final question. And um, how does your DNA test compare to the others on the market? So when it, so there's, um, it's, it's the best uh, DNA test kit on the market right now that's checking for SNPs. Uh, there are some whole genome kits on the market. Uh, the ones that are selling whole genome actually are planning on selling your data. Essentially, uh, you know, 23andMe is trying to monetize the SNP kits, the, these, uh, the SNP, the ones that have a lot of the, these chips with a lot of SNPs. Mm. Other companies are now trying to monetize your whole genome. Mm. So we're very cautious about uh, recommending any of these companies. Mm. Uh, we want to implement that on our own, but Right now, it's not really going to make a difference if you have whole genome because, you know, uh, we're doing this imputation where, you know, you, you'll get, let's say, 800,000 SNPs, but we can then predict, you know, millions of SNPs from that. Mm-hmm. And so the actual difference uh, is not going to be significant. And for the next couple of years, you know, the next three years, it's not going to make a difference if you have whole genome or not. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to these SNP chips, we are by far the best. And um, I'm not saying that you know there was the chip that we had before this actually wasn't the best and we changed it because i said i don't want to sell uh you know over time we realized hey it's missing these snips that i want we look really carefully at all the best uh snip chips and this one is better than 23 me mm-hmm. it basically has all 23 me snips mm-hmm. but we added 50,000 snips that are very important mm-hmm. it's funny because it so many people keep on saying a 23 me is nowhere near anywhere as good. And it's funny when I uploaded my results into your, into your software, I, rem- I remember I was saying like, dude, like 
does this work? You go, yeah, but you're going to be missing loads of information because we test for a lot more. <laughs> and it's just like, and so many people have said this and I'm just like absolutely gutted. But um, so, yeah, so <clears throat> perhaps I should do your test at some point um, and see and compare the difference. That would probably, probably make a good blog post or a good uh, story, actually. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so, okay, Joe, well, it's been awesome to catch up today. So, um, so we're going to give away uh, the subscription uh, to self decode to one of the questions do you want to pick which one you think was the best question before we wrap up okay so let me see so hmm, i gotta which one do you think was the best question tim uh <laughs> you bastard <laughs> <laughs> uh, um i think uh blah, 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 let me just have a quick look um yeah i'm looking to, how does it compare to other DNA? I mean, that, in all honesty, I think that that's probably the most fit. The last one's the most fitting in terms of um, people understanding the difference between you and the other DNA tests out there. But I think that's only one small part of the whole puzzle because it's about decoding what the what the data is that you've got, and that's the beauty of the system um, compared to all the others. So I think, uh, regardless of where your test comes from, it's, it's how you decode it, how you look at it, and get the insights from it, which is where Joe really um, flourishes. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Can you can you counteract problems from future generations by Eve? I think that's probably that's probably my favor favorite. That's that's in the top, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um, so okay, so we'll we'll go with that one. Yeah, so with that one. Sarah, Sarah, if you can make a note of that, that's Eve Miller. Um, Eve, well done. Thank you very much. Um, that's a good question. I really like the one about future generations as well. Um, so that's that's really cool. So Sarah from my team will be in touch with you to hook you up with Joe's team um, to give you a subscription to uh, that. That will happen soon. Joe, um, stay on the line uh, for Zoom. We're going to wrap up on Instagram now, um, but we're going to continue on here for a second. So guys, thank you very much for listening in today. Uh, make sure you follow Joe. Uh, so Mr. Biohacker versus Tim Biohacker. Um, so if you follow Joe and if you go to self decode on Instagram as well, he's got a, um, he's massive on, on his email and uh, newsletter database. So it's worth signing up there. Instagram is fairly new to self decode because it's not been a, re a reliant source in the past, but it'd be good if you go over and support and follow him there. And then obviously check me out on my story on Tim Biohacker on Instagram as well, if you don't already. So um, guys on Instagram, thank you very much for listening in and have an amazing day. And I will catch you on the next one soon.